Hello USA, this is Sherry Lane bringing you important updated information. Please watch this all the way through because I'm going to bring you breaking news and a perfect example of the misinformation going on out there. Coming at you with NBC, CNN, ABC News, and Fox 11 News Special Report. Here is our breaking news tonight. A former staffer for Vice President Mike Pence confirming the White House officials pressured the CDC to downplay the risk of sending children back to school. This as infection rates are on the rise in more than half of this country. I want you to just take a look at this map. 21 states are going in the wrong direction right now. Let's discuss. Dr. Peter Hotez is here. He is a vaccine scientist and the dean of tropical medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. Um, doctor, thank you so much. This is very disturbing. I want to start with this breaking news, first reported by the Times. They write, and I quote here, that White House officials tried to circumvent the CDC in a search for alternate data showing that the pandemic was weakening and posed little danger to children. So CNN has now confirmed that. Is the administration trying to, to skew the science for political reasons here? Uh, the, unfortunately, yes. I mean, this is, uh, this is actually one component of a pretty impressive, in a, in a nefarious way, a disinformation campaign, an anti-science disinformation campaign put out by the White House. I mean, look, I was, you know, we had uh, data coming out of South Korea that was published in, over the summer, I think it was June or July, showing that uh, adolescents transmit this virus just as well as adults do, and even little kids can transmit virus uh, pretty well. And I was meeting, I remember over the summer, meeting with school boards and teachers and principals and superintendents that were doing everything they could to adhere to CDC guidelines, uh, you know, doing things with plexiglass and social distancing. And I would say to them, it it's, was heartbreaking because I would say to them, look, there are a few places in the country you can do this, maybe up in the northern New England where transmission is so low, you probably can have an okay uh, fall semester. But in places like Texas and Florida, we had so much transmission, teachers will get COVID and students will get COVID and you'll have staff and bus drivers going into the hospital. I, I don't see a way it can work. And then you had this alternate reality coming out of the White House. You had Scott, uh, what's his name, uh, Atlas, you know, writing a uh, very prominent op-ed piece in The Hill explaining why it was safe for that we had to open schools and you knew it was you know it was not, not based uh, not based on the data and then you had the this very uh, odd set of releases coming out of the CDC explaining why schools are important as if we don't get that I mean we under, mm -hmm. we understand why schools are important I'm a parent of four adult kids and when my kids were little and we understood why schools are important and also for food security and low-income neighborhoods and for mental health counseling everybody understood that but but it was never linked to really strong evidence showing that it was going to be safe and we knew it wasn't so this this new york times report just ties together now that's sort of an aha moment yeah of course now now it all makes sense this this was more of a part of this deliberate misinformation campaign Doctor, I think you've made your point, and I got to ask one question, So, but you got, you got everything covered. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Okay, don't turn this off. I'm bringing you ABC News next. We're going to tie this all in together, and I'm going to show you the perfect example of a doctor who's been misinforming people for personal gains and political reasons. Here we go. Stay tuned. And ABC's Kena Whitworth from California tonight. Extremely erratic fire behavior and high winds. You can see how the smoke is really just starting to swirl and you hear the trees popping. Now the winds are expected to die down, but the red flag warnings will remain in effect and in fact extend south into Los Angeles through tomorrow. David. All right, Kena Whitworth with the unbelievable scene in California tonight. Kena, thank you. We move on this Monday to the coronavirus here in the U.S. Cases rising across much of this country. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling ABC News today, we are not in a good place. Cases increasing in 33 states and Puerto Rico, more than 7 million confirmed cases so far. Nearly 205,000 lives lost here in the U.S. And in Florida tonight, the images coming in, the bars and restaurants crowded immediately after limits were lifted in that state. President Trump this afternoon saying we are rounding the corner. Dr. Fauci has said we need to be at 10,000 cases a day as we head into the fall flu season to tackle this pandemic. But we are far from that. Here's ABC's Victor Kendo. 
In Florida, crowds are again packing restaurants and bars after the governor gave the green light to fully reopen. After first reopening in May, Florida became the epicenter of the virus, so far losing more than 14,000 lives. Cases are now rising in 33 states and Puerto Rico. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling GMA he's concerned about the level of infection. We're not in a good place with regard to what I had said back then because as we get into the fall and the winter, you really want the level of community spread to be as low as you possibly get it. And I hope not, but we very well might start seeing increases in deaths. New York sounding the alarm after topping more than a thousand cases for the first time since June. It comes as thousands more students go back to New York City classrooms and limited indoor dining reopens. Today, President Trump announcing 150 million rapid tests are on their way to the states. The vice president today with this blunt warning. The American people uh, should anticipate that, that cases will rise in the days ahead. Stay with me. We're going to look at NBC and then I'm going to bring you Fox 11 News special so you can see the doctor that continues to misinform and downplay this virus for political reasons and personal gains. All right, here's NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Lester. Gabe Gutierrez, thank you. There's new concern about the rising number of children with COVID-19 just as the country's largest school system is about to resume in-person classes. It's coming as cases are increasing in more than half of states across the country. With more, here's Ann Thompson. New York City's on-again, off-again in-person learning is supposed to start tomorrow. Frank Raphael's daughter is joining half of the city's 1.1 million public school students in classrooms. Principals Union now says there are not enough teachers to staff classrooms, and it wants the state to take over the school system from the city. This amidst growing concern for kids in COVID. Today, the American Academy of Pediatrics reports a 14% increase in cases among children over the past two weeks, and that overall children account for more than 10% of all COVID cases. From the White House today, help for schools with more rapid testing. You'll have a, a result at a maximum 15 minutes machine. No machine is required to process them. 100 million tests will go out to states to aid schools and businesses in reopening. This is 26 states report increases in coronavirus cases over the past 14 days. Over 100% jumps in Wyoming and Utah and upticks in Wisconsin, Colorado, Montana, among others. In Florida, where there is a 14% drop in cases over the last two weeks, bars and restaurants can now be fully open. But health officials warn with colder weather coming and people moving indoors, this is not the time to drop your guard. I think all of us are very worried about what's going to happen in the fall and winter. Um, whether we end up with another 200,000 Americans dead, whether we end up at that 400,000 number, it's really up to us. Eva, Ellie, and Anastasia Raphael have masks and hand sanitizer, along with pencils and folders, to go back to school. Is it going to be tough to stay six feet apart from your friends? Yes, that would be a big challenge. All they want is certainty. And this fall will be a challenge. Vice President Mike Pence says Americans should anticipate cases will rise. The hope is these new faster tests will help officials do a better job of controlling the spread. Lester? And Thompson tonight, thank you. Okay, now let's take a good look at the difference from the serious news, people wanting to protect us, give us real information out there to help us. Now with Fox 11 News Special and Dr. Drew Pinsky. Governor Gavin Newsom says more counties could move into the less restrictive red tier as of tomorrow, but here's what he had to say about Southern California. You can see here in the lower part of Southern California, and this is around Imperial, Orange, Riverside counties, elsewhere, uh, you can see similar trends. This is a 0.97 are effective in these assembles of counties, our assemblage of counties that we've put forward. Those include uh, San Diego County as well. 
According to the governor, the R effective in lower Southern California, as you heard him just say, has risen, calling it a concerning trend. But he says it's still below one, which is good news. The governor also singled out upper Southern California, which includes the Central Coast, and some of the northern part of L.A. County, where the R effective is at 1.02. Dr. Barbara Ferrer also said today it does not look like L.A. County will see a large Labor Day spike. And while we still may experience increases in cases associated with activities over the Labor Day holiday, we do not predict a similar surge as was seen after Memorial Day and after the July 4th holiday. There, Dr. There Fischi is so finally much disturbing. said it. I'm so disturbed about so much there. We're going to see activities from a month ago having an effect on the transmission rate that is declining. That is irresponsible, and it's, it's frankly, it's, it's false. It's a false narrative, and it is absolutely untrue. We would have seen the trend. If you look after Memorial Day, the trend began in three days, and it was up. Right. Since Labor Day, it has been consistently a negative slope, and it's continuing until this day. Good job, Los Angeles. You're doing a good job. That's what she should be telling us. And the governor getting into the weeds on the r not that is not something the general public should be interested in. Well, that's in right what now. I want you to explain to us, because he talked about how case numbers are down, hospitalizations are down, ICU admissions are down, but what's the R effective? Why he's, this concerning he's, trend? He's talking about the so-called case rate, which is how many how many uh, cases are caused by another person infecting you know who infects how many is sort of the trend and right now we call something a case we don't even call them sick we just call them a case huh. so we don't even know we're just picking up pieces of the viral particles that are flying around it is irresponsible to give that to the public talk about what he did talk about the hospitalization the death rate the ic right. rate all down that's all that really matters we really don't know how many of the people that go down as a case are even sick at the beginning of the pandemic everybody was sick now it's really unclear most people are not sick let me tell you what's disturbing i'll tell you what's disturbing is when you have someone that calls himself a doctor and is on national television supposedly to help people but really looking out for himself and political reasons and personal gains what's disturbing is to have a doctor call the virus a hoax which in fact he did in the beginning which in fact he was also one that told people they don't need to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. Flat out told him not to wear a mask. Even Alex Michelson brought it up on the newscast, asking him and confronting him that he was one of those people that told people they didn't need to wear a mask. And he blew that off. I'll tell you some other things that's disturbing. This man, he says that the general public doesn't need to know about that. Well, why is he talking about CRP and cytokines on his short brief session? Now, I know that the CRP is C-reactive protein, but the general public does not. The general public doesn't know about cytokines. This man has pushed depression and stress on everyone so much, trying to convince the world that stress and depression and mental health issues from the pandemic are more important than risking your life with a virus that the President of the United States, in fact, called a deadly virus and worse than the most strenuous flus. I'm sure that by now you have heard the recording that he said this to Bob Woodward. Now, there has been a study, study of 6,500 plus people that came out in the journal Science Advances, and it stated stress and depression symptoms were linked more with personal exposure than public spread, suggesting concerns about contracting the disease outweighed concerns about pandemic-related disruptions in daily life. Biggest risk of, for depression symptoms dr drew was having had a mental health diagnosis before the pandemic the researchers found the other two major factors affecting mental health were employment and stress increased more from the misinformation by media on the pandemic related disruptions in daily life this study reported in the journal Science Advances. This man has even tried to tell people to open up the gyms and restaurants and let people eat inside due to the fires in California. So let's leave one high risk of the smoke and the dangerous quality of air outside to add on another high risk for your life by going in and eating around crowds in a restaurant. He has dismissed almost every study I've heard them bring on this station since June. Do a little binge watching of this man in June. I sent him a letter 
I sent him a few things and one of my t-shirts and my patent pending contact tracing device. I mentioned about him always doing a silver lining. This man used to just stay calm, not give anyone healthy fear, not bring the facts, but everything was a silver lining. Then another woman came on their news uh, broadcast and said the same thing. You always give a silver lining. All of a sudden he starts this riled up act like he's mad about everything. This is ridiculous to ridicule Governor Newsom, Mayor Garcetti, Dr. Barbara Ferrer, all the time when they are doing their job following science, following logic to protect Los Angeles. Prevention, Dr. Drew, prevention is the key here. Everyone's not gonna end up with a mental issue. Everyone's not going to end up depressed, but I tell you what, spreading some positivity, giving actual factual information, guiding people, telling them what they need to do to stay safe, and not giving them false information and acting like it's perfect for everyone to go out there. You're ridiculing this off of three days. We should have been able to judge Labor Day off of three days. Come on, we all know by now that it takes up to two weeks to even start showing symptoms. And then that day eight through 11, once you've started showing symptoms, let's say after two weeks, is when people really start getting worse if they are in fact going to be one of those unfortunate people that this is going to hit hard, possibly put them in the hospital, possibly on a ventilator, and unfortunately may even risk dying. This is so unfortunate and you need to quit downplaying this. We need to pull together and somehow get this man off the air. I encourage you, just binge watch him. The study in Sturgis, South Dakota with the bikers for that bike rally Oh my word, he discredited that study so fast. Come on, you, you might have looked at it as they're one of the three least populated states, but no, you're doing that number manipulation thing there again. We know that South Dakota is one of the three least populated states and you should have looked at it as a per capita instead of you reading out in August the results showed that they had an increase from 100 cases to 300 cases a day and from 40 hospitalizations to 80 hospitalizations a day. We're talking about Los Angeles mentioning our high numbers. Of course, you're going to say that we are the second largest city. So quit doing these mind games. In Sturgis, going from 100 to 300 in a low populated state, tripling these numbers, and I'd say that the study was actually sounds very valid to me because we went from 40% hospitalization to 37% hospitalization when they tripled their number of cases. And I don't understand why you don't find this very valid to say after 500,000 bikers were there that in August they did contact tracing, which can't even be that valid because it's all, you, you can't do contact tracing for all these people. It's just totally impossible because we don't have a national plan. We don't have that national contact tracing device in real time, which we need, which I put my heart, soul, money, lack of sleep into when I filed for a patent pending large scale contact tracing device on June 5th after sending out the information to several doctors encouraging me to continue with this I sent it out on April 28th. Now we're going into October and we have you knocking everything down, knocking the scientists, knocking Fauci. You're not a scientist. These people that are in charge of Los Angeles, they are following the scientists. They are following the logic. And I've said since day one, unfortunately, this is survival of the fittest or the smartest or the luckiest. And I don't know about you, but we certainly don't want to gamble with our lives. Now, because you're a doctor, we know that you get the N95 mask. In fact, you said we shouldn't shame people on not wearing a mask. Really? Why not? You shamed your son on national television for wearing his N95 mask that daddy, I'm sure, got him. But in fact, your son should wear that N95 mask. In fact, if you want to push opening up this economy so badly, so soon, which I get, we do need some of this economy open. People do need to be able to feed their families, but this country needs to pull it together and support people who can't afford that right now. The government needs to support the people that are losing money, that can't afford things. But unless this country can step up and do what is so 
obvious since day one common sense and it's science everyone needs an n95 mask there needs to be mandated masks there needs to be high enough consequences that people will put that mask on and because you're still going to have people not put that mask on we need a face shield also every single person i don't care if you use the census or what i get the frontline people they need those masks they need the N95, but have you ever thought about the fact that if we have an N95, like South Korea and China did, we're not gonna have all these hospitalizations. We're not gonna be putting the frontline people at risk. We're not going to overcrowd the hospitals. And yes, we have the flu season coming up. So what a perfect time. So instead of hoarding the N95s and stocking up for the fall, which they've been doing for quite some time, we could have been getting those out to all of the Americans to stop this, get it under control, having those businesses that must be open and those frontline workers, including the grocery stores, the deliveries, the people that pick up our trash, the UPS, FedEx, Postal Service, everyone. These people need an N95 mask and face shield. Then next would be obviously the people that are sick so they stop spreading it and stop spreading it in their household that household needs n95 masks people need to just briefly tell them how to keep it clean if they can only have one at first you need to open it up on amazon stop blocking the neosian fda approved the national institute of occupational safety and health and the fda approved masks that we need so that we have the fluid resistant mask people need this you want to open up the economy it's like putting us out there in war they've called this the war against an invisible enemy okay so you put americans out there with no armor and you've taken away our weapons allow us to purchase the weapons the armor so we can fight this too because if you fight it on both ends of the spectrum guess what We'll be able to open up this economy much sooner and if you really want to do contact tracing we need large scale contact tracing and this country is not going to risk their privacy on cell phones so if you only have five percent willing to do this from an app on their phone you're only going to know if you've been exposed to five percent of the people which is five percent of the people all over the place or let's even say 5% in your state, my state, let's say California. So I'm gonna get a false sense of security because maybe 5% are willing to do this and their phone has to stay on? Come on, we need contact tracing. One device that's visible for everyone to see using the same system, but each state can be responsible of their own. Track it in real time and I have a contact tracing pandemic wristband device that can alert people if they have been exposed with a flashing light so they know they get priority testing and they can use their ID number through the census or an ID number from a hospital or a shelter or any designated places so they go online with their ID number not their name so it can stay anonymous only put in the pertinent information that they want to put in if they test positive no one will have to call everyone and it takes a week and human hours that by the time a week goes by it's too late they've already infected too many people if they've been exposed each state can be responsible of those exposed in that state. Send out the signal and it, that light is on red. Has anyone thought about a passport after all of this is done? After there's a vaccine, I shouldn't even say done because once there is a vaccine, the, the studies are showing 60 some percent are willing to get the vaccine. Well, there's gonna be so much hate and crime and violence going on because how are we going to know who should wear a mask and who shouldn't wear a mask but you know what if we had contact tracing right now where everybody had the same wristband that locks like a hospital band and you know what they can't go in a store if they don't have it on they can't go here if they don't have it on they can't they're encouraged this way that they need to wear it but if they get that vaccine then their light is green they have a passport they can get in anywhere no problems don't have to wear a mask. We need to start this now. We need to start prevention. We need to tell people how to stay safe. 
They're not going to panic if you give them the real information. But what's causing panic? I wouldn't even say panic. Only you, Dr. Drew, are calling it panic. And President Trump, which there's an obvious sign right there why Drew is downplaying all of this for everyone on his political reasons and personal gains. But we need to inform people. We need to give them the proper gear or allow them to purchase the proper gear. You need to explain all the ways that this can be transmitted. We need contact tracing that does not discriminate, that does not risk privacy. And you know what? If we open up salons and everyone's got an N95 mask and it's mandatory, people can actually see that wristband. Is it flashing, meaning that they need to get in for priority testing? Is it red, which means they're supposed to be quarantining? It works both ways. All these studies on the masks are only testing for your mask protecting others. Let's start showing some studies on masks protecting us with the particles going into our masks. Obviously, we wouldn't track people from other countries and vice versa, but we would still recognize that wristband to see it's safe for families to bring their kids in for vaccinations. Come on, we're talking about little tiny children and kids under two can't wear the masks. You've got other people's children and we don't have the N95 mask and you're insisting that they should feel safe? Did you not see all the other news out there? Have you not heard what our president has said about this virus that is deadly? Come on. Now, parents, they actually have to worry that they might get sick and won't have anyone to take care of their kids. Or even worse, their kids won't have any parents. So it's not called panic when parents are trying to be smart, trying to be responsible, and you keep downplaying this and everybody giving all of this mixed information. It's just got to stop. People can handle it but not when you don't give them the right tools to protect themselves and keep their families safe. This country is so divided and all we care about right now is the election. There are real scientists, real doctors out there trying to help people. Dr. Fauci is trying to help people. The CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, all of these people are trying to help people. You need to stop getting in their way. Okay, America, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please click like, share, and subscribe. And 